Communication is important in every workplace, but when it comes to safety and industries handling chemicals, communication is absolutely essential. Just one overlooked detail or a misinterpreted hazard label could lead to a dangerous or even deadly situation. To help reduce these risks, we rely on the Globally Harmonized System, or GHS. GHS is a universal standard developed by the United Nations that aligns hazard classification and communication across the globe, replacing a hodgepodge of regional and national systems with a consistent, unified approach. Industries from construction to manufacturing, healthcare to cleaning services all use this system. GHS helps us communicate safety information through standardized labels and pictograms, the universal language for transmitting hazard information about chemicals. This protects workers, consumers, and the environment alike. In the U.S., this system was adopted by OSHA through the Hazard Communication Standard, also known as HAZCOM 2012. So what does all this mean for you? In this training, we'll dive into the practical application of GHS in the workplace, focusing especially on understanding labeling requirements. You'll learn about the responsibilities and requirements of the system, how to read and interpret GHS labels, and how to apply this knowledge to your day-to-day -day work. Let's get started. The globally harmonized system of hazard communication brings together different players in the chemical supply chain, assigning clear responsibilities to each to ensure safety. Uh, first, we have manufacturers, distributors, and importers. They are the gatekeepers responsible for classifying the hazards of the chemical they produce or import and providing safety data sheets for each. Now, a safety data sheet, or SDS, is like a comprehensive guide to a chemical's properties, risk, and safety measures. These entities must also ensure each container shipped out carries a GHS label, an essential, visible tool that plays a key role in workplace safety. While the rest of this training will primarily focus on GHS labels, you can learn more about safety data sheets in our other courses. Then we have employers who manage safety within the workplace. Their duties involve keeping all SDSs readily available, maintaining labels on all containers, training employees on understanding and using this information, and developing a written hazard communication program that outlines how the company complies with HAZCOM 2012. Understanding these responsibilities is the foundation for implementing GHS in any workplace. By clearly defining roles and requirements, GHS helps ensure that crucial hazard information is effectively communicated at all stages, promoting a safer environment for everyone involved. If safety data sheets are the comprehensive guide, think of GHS labels as your quick visual cheat sheet for chemical safety. They help workers quickly see and understand what they're dealing with. Let's break down each of the seven elements you'll find on a GHS label. The product identifier is like the chemical's name tag. It tells you exactly what the chemical is, whether it's a trade name, a chemical name, or a code. This is how you match the chemical to its safety data sheet. Pictograms are the visual symbols we use to represent specific hazards associated with the chemical, like flammability or toxicity. They're designed to be universally understood, conveying hazard information at a glance. We'll cover these pictograms in more detail later. Danger or warning. Now, these are the two signal words used in the GHS system. Danger is used for more severe hazards, while warning indicates a less severe hazard. They quickly grab attention, letting you know the chemical poses some risk. Hazard statements are sentences that describe the nature of the chemical's hazards, such as highly flammable, causes skin irritation, or very toxic to aquatic life. They give a precise description of the risk involved in handling the chemical. Precautionary statements are like guides for action, briefly communicating how to prevent exposure, what to do in case of exposure, how to store the chemical safely, and how to dispose of it correctly. These are your go-to guidelines for safe handling and use. We have supplemental information because sometimes there's more to tell. 
This space is used for additional instructions or safety measures that don't fit into the other categories. It could include information about certain risks not covered by GHS or specific national regulations. Lastly, who's responsible for this chemical? Supplier information is where you'll find their name, address, and phone number. It's important to know who to contact in case you need more information or if something goes wrong. By understanding these elements, you can interpret the crucial safety information each label holds, equipping yourself with the knowledge to handle chemicals safely and effectively. Remember, a GHS label isn't just a sticker on a container. It's a vital tool for hazard communication. Having now seen the key elements of a GHS label, let's take a closer look at the hazard pictograms. Now, we use nine different diamond-shaped pictograms to represent the classes of chemical hazards. Each pictogram contains a symbol on a white background framed within a red border. The flame pictogram serves as a visual cue for substances that have a high risk of catching fire or causing explosion. It's a stark reminder of the need for caution when dealing with flammable materials. The health hazard pictogram is associated with potentially life-threatening conditions like acute toxicity, skin sensitization, or even reproductive toxicity. It marks chemicals that may have significant harmful effects upon direct exposure. The exclamation mark pictogram is used for chemicals that can cause discomfort or harm, but are less severe than those indicated by the health hazard pictogram. Now, this might include irritants affecting the skin, eyes, or the respiratory system. The gas cylinder pictogram is a warning sign for compressed gas hazards. Substances marked with this pictogram are stored under pressure and may explode or cause injury if mishandled. The corrosion pictogram is designated for corrosive hazards. It points to chemicals that can cause severe skin burn, eye damage, or can corrode metals. The exploding bomb pictogram is a symbol of explosive hazards. It signals the presence of unstable substances that can explode or cause severe physical damage. The flame over circle pictogram is indicative of oxidizing hazards. Substances with this pictogram can react with other materials, often causing fires or explosions. The environmental pictogram is a reminder of the broader environmental implications. It marks substances that can cause harm to aquatic life or contribute to ozone depletion. Lastly, the skull and crossbones pictogram is reserved for the most toxic substances. Exposure to chemicals marked with this pictogram can cause serious health effects, including death. By understanding these pictograms, we can read the danger at a glance and therefore handle these substances more safely. So, Let's take this understanding and apply it to some practical examples in our next section. Let's take what we learned about GHS label elements so far and put them to use. We'll take a look at two real world chemical examples. First, we have a label for a chemical with the product identifier HS85. Now, this identifier, although not a common name, is a unique code that specifies exactly what chemical we're dealing with and which safety data sheet it corresponds to, in case we need more information. This chemical isn't particularly hazardous, as we can see from the exclamation mark pictogram, signifying a moderate health hazard. The pictogram is also followed by a less severe signal word, warning. The label tells us it's harmful if swallowed, which is the hazard statement. Now, following that, we see the precautionary statement. Now, these include instructions like washing hands and face thoroughly after handling the chemical, not eating, drinking, or smoking when using the product, and disposal instructions to comply with local, state, and federal regulations. Then we have the first aid instructions in case someone swallows this chemical. The label tells us to call a doctor if we feel unwell and to rinse our mouth. Lastly, the supplier information tells us who made or distributed the product and how to get in touch with them. Now, this label is a fairly common example of what you might see in your day-to-day -day work with less hazardous chemicals. Our second example is a more complex and hazardous chemical, Oxy-252, as indicated by its product identifier. 
Now straight away we see two pictograms, one for corrosion and another for oxidizing. These symbols immediately let us know that we're dealing with a chemical that can cause serious harm, including fires, explosions, and severe burns. The GHS signal word danger underscores the severity of these risks. Now, this is followed by hazard statements, may cause fire or explosion, strong oxidizer, and causes severe skin burns and eye damage, which explicitly warn us the dangers this chemical presents. Next, we find a series of detailed precautionary statements, such as keep away from heat, clothing, and other combustible materials. Wear specific protective gear, like neoprene gloves, safety goggles, a face shield with a chin guard along, and flame-resistant clothing. We're warned not to breathe in dust or mist and reminded to wash thoroughly after handling. It also covers methods for safe storage and disposal. We then see an extensive list of first aid measures to follow in the event of various types of exposure, from skin and eye contact to inhalation and ingestion. They also suggest specific treatment measures, such as the use of a doctor-prescribed burn cream. The label also provides specific instructions for handling a fire involving this chemical, including using water spray to put it out, and warning of the risk of explosion. Finally, the supplier information gives us the details we need to contact the manufacturer or distributor for more information about this chemical. Now, keep in mind, these are just two examples, and the exact details on a GHS label can vary based on the specific hazards of the chemical. The key is to familiarize yourself with the label elements, understand what they mean, and use that knowledge for any new chemicals you come across in your workplace. Any immediate container directly holding a hazardous chemical must be labeled with a comprehensive GHS hazard label. Now, these labels play a critical role at every state of handling, from manufacturing to end use. Let's look at how these labels are applied in different scenarios, such as on original, secondary, and small containers, as well as during transport with multiple packaging layers. Manufacturers, distributors, and importers are the first line of defense in hazard communication. They are responsible for applying comprehensive GHS labels on the original containers of each chemical they produce or import. These labels should remain clear and intact on the original containers until they're cleaned and no longer pose a hazard. There are times when these chemicals may need to be transferred into secondary containers. For instance, when a worker pours cleaning chemicals into a spray bottle or a technician transfers a substance into a portable container for a specific task. In these cases, this secondary storage container must also carry a GHS label that communicates the same hazard information as the original. Small containers like lab vials can be a challenge to label. In these cases, you can use creative solutions like pull-out labels, fold-back labels, or tags. In cases where it's really not possible to fit all GHS labeling information on a small container, at minimum, you must include the product identifier, signal word, pictograms, contact details, and a statement directing the user to a full label attached to the small container's secondary packaging. Now, speaking of packaging, in transportation scenarios, we often deal with multiple packaging layers, immediate containers, secondary and tertiary packaging, boxes, pallets, and more. Uh, just remember, the immediate container which holds the chemical should always bear the correct GHS labels. If the container is small and its labeling is limited, the secondary packaging should carry the full GHS label. According to OSHA, tertiary packaging and beyond do not require GHS labels, but remember, the Department of Transportation has its own labeling requirements and should be consulted as needed. For additional training on transporting, storing, and handling hazardous chemicals, feel free to check out our other courses. As we wrap up our training, let's revisit what we've discussed about the globally harmonized system, its labeling requirements, and its vital role in hazard communication. We started by understanding the origin and purpose of GHS and its global mission to standardize hazard communication, promoting safety across industries and countries. 
We then examined the key players in the GHS system, manufacturers, distributors and importers, and employers. We highlighted their responsibilities in maintaining a consistent and effective flow of hazard information, from classifying chemicals and providing safety data sheets and GHS labels, to managing GHS labels, training, and written hazard communication programs in the workplace. We learned how to read and interpret GHS labels, covering their key elements and pictograms, and applying that knowledge with two real-world examples. Finally, we discussed the importance of accurate labeling across various containers throughout the chemical distribution, storage, and handling processes. As we wrap up, remember that GHS isn't just a set of labels. It's a commitment to a safer work culture. Your engagement in this training reflects your dedication to ensuring not only your safety, but also the safety of your coworkers. Thank you for your time and attention.